Whoa, this is the illusion reporting from somewhere on Spaceship Earth. It's time for a book review. Mmm, big tasty drink of coffee. All right. The Inventor and the Tycoon by Edward Ball. This book, all right, we're just going to go on base level. This is a historical novel about Leland Stanford. You don't know who Leland Stanford is. Hmm. If you live in California, you probably should find out. I didn't really know a lot about Leland Stanford until I read this book. He's one of the basic badasses who kind of makes California happen, but he's sort of a grueler too. Full money-hungry, monopoly type of guy who takes advantage of a lot of people, but gets filthy rich. And basically, he built the railroad. He was the dude who built the, uh, I think it's the Western Pacific, from uh, San Francisco to Promontory Point in uh, Utah, right? Kind of a big deal he was the guy, because he had to go over the Sierras, which was no small feat in the uh, mid-1800s. And about Edward Ball, Edward Ball wrote the book. <laughs> Edward Mybridge, who was the, uh, basically made the first movie clip, ultimately. And uh, he did it for Leland Stanford, and he was a gnarly photographer. But uh, on just the book level, this book has pictures everywhere. If there was a picture, about the subject matter, it's in this book. I know I'm not getting a... Uh, there's pictures th throughout the book, which is... And most of them were taken by Edward Mybridge, who was like this photographer in the, in the mid-1800s. So it's about these two characters, right? And it's, what's real interesting is all the books I've been reading are basically all mid to late 1800s when they're taken part. And it's interesting how a lot of things are, are cross-pollinating at the time. Because it's the big westward expansions going on. So the thing was this... Edward Mybridge, he changes his name like six times through the, through the uh, novel because he's a real weirdo. He was a real weirdo. And so this dude, first, first claim to fame is he becomes the guy who's taking the, the pictures of Yosemite. He's the first guy, to, like he's actually the second guy to start taking all the crazy pictures of Yosemite and Half Dome. And he goes in there and traipses around and for months at a time and just gets crazy photos of Yosemite, and he sells them as little. Here, here is Edward Myridge, the famous shot of that's him over a selfie. He was doing selfies, and uh, so he would make little pictures and sell them. But the thing was, he got all hooked up with this girl. Yep, and she was banging another dude, and he wasn't having it, so he went. And just straight up killed the guy. Yep, just went up to his place up in, uh, outside of Napa. Knocked on the door and filled him full of lead. Now, yeah, that's the way it was though. See, California's just starting out. I think California was, was founded in 1848 or something. I should know that number. I think that's pretty close. And bit the big gold rush and the whole thing. So there was all this like wild west justice going on. But also it was like relatively civilized. So he blasts this guy who's banging his old lady. Oh, that's why he has, he gets her pregnant too. And adultery in the 1800s is a no-go. And out west it's even more of a no-go because at the time... In, in the U.S., like the first uh, justifiable homicide by insanity guy gets off with it. And there's this congressman who shoots 
the guy who's banging his wife and gets away with him out in Washington. So, but the telegraph lines have just expanded across the West. So this becomes the first, like, I don't know, tabloid journalism, if you will. Everyone, all the reporters are down following this dude's case. And he pleads, he doesn't even plead not guilty. He's like, yep, I killed her. He had it coming. I killed the guy. I had it coming. My wife was a slut. And end the story, dude. Well, the jury is like, yep, fully allowed to do it. They give, they not guilty. They acquit him. He gets away with killing this dude. And God, he was such a donkey, though. This guy was kind of a dick. Because his there's a kid involved, and he just gives the kid to an orphanage, and and the 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 girl ends up dying. Like you know, look, man, I'm not about adultery, but he was kind of a donkey, dude. He just basically would leave her in San Francisco and go uh, go take pictures out, out wherever, up to in Alaska. He was getting all these crazy assignments to go take these photos because he was the first kind of badass photographer. So he would just leave his, like, hot chick unattended, man. And, you know, that's what happens when you don't give your woman any loving, dude. She's going to go find it. But, you know, it's the 1800s. But she got made to be into this pariah in San Francisco, dude. And San Francisco, you, you learn about San Francisco because San Francisco's just getting founded. And this is San Francisco pre-earthquake. And it is it is the Barbary Coast, man. It's madness. Enough with, with this dude. So, But this guy ends up linking up with Leland Stanford, who's basically a grocer that gets rich by convincing the government to give him like tax-free bonds to build his railroad. And basically he screws over the United States government. I don't think he ever really pays it back. You know, your standard shyster. But he does something that, you know, at the time was kind of revolutionary. He linked the West Coast to the East Coast. If he hadn't had the... the the wherewithal to, to get it done, I don't know, man. We would be living in multiple countries, but maybe that isn't the worst thing. Anyhow, you know. But when he got the railroad built, he was a total, he was a total money grubber, man. Like, people were super fired up on him in the beginning. Like, dude, yeah, Leland Stanford, man. The Western Pacific or Union, whatever. I forget what it was, man. I think it was the Western Pacific. And so he uh I stop looking at the book and start doing my book review. So uh but he starts becoming the the monopoly grower and part of the deal was for every every uh for every mile of from when he builds the railroad they get huge chunks of land next to the railroad that the government just gives him like a, a square mile every mile or something. So he becomes this huge land tycoon too in California. But what he does is he sets, because he runs the train and it's the way the grain gets to where it's supposed to go because the California agricultural valley is the San Joaquin Valley is exploding with agriculture. And so he basically collapses freight wagon market. He goes and just lowers his rates to beat out the, the freight wagons and the competition. He buys up all the other little railroads. And then he does the switcheroo and just jacks up the rates on everybody who wants. That's what it is. He doesn't collapse the freight companies. He basically says to the farmers, if you ship your crops via any other way besides my railroad, you'll never ever come to my railroad and I'm going to charge you more. So he basically inflates the rates way beyond fair market share where the farmers are now getting squeezed and he's just stuffing his pockets, man. This dude becomes like the full first like mega, mega rich dude on the West Coast. He builds this giant house in San Francisco and him and his little donkey buddies are super rich and they, they 
they form what's Knob Hill in, in San Francisco at the top of California Street, and they build these giant palaces. But the thing is, is he hires this MyBridge guy to take photos of the interior of his mansion because he wants pictures of his opulence because these dudes, these dudes were such assholes, man. And so, yeah, dude, just money assholes. And so, uh, it's <laughs> just unbelievable. And, but in, in the process, he becomes a horse connoisseur of racing horses and he wants to there's a big bet that's going on is whether a horse is running whether all feet are off the ground or one foot's touching and no one knows because the horse moves so fast when it's running and no one can see with their naked eyes so he gets my bridge to to set up an apparatus to shoot photos to capture the horse's motion and in the process, he does it with all these cameras, like 24 cameras and this whole giant thing set up. But he does it down in what is soon to be eventually where Palo Alto is, Stanford University. And by the way, Leland Stanford was one of the early governors of California, which helps him get the money. And uh, he's uh, he's one of the first governors of California, but so... The thing is, karma's a motherfucker, right? And uh, he's so multi-mega rich, and he's he's molding his son to be the mega rich inheritance, and his kid croaks out in Europe at like 17, just ah, gets sick and dies, right? Stanford hasn't got anywhere to put his money, so what does he do? He's some Oh, this is when they're all into psychics and stuff in the 1800s. He decides, the psychic tells him to build a university. So he goes and he builds Stanford University, which produces some of the smartest people the world's ever seen, you know. And uh, that's Leland Stanford, dude. That's his legacy we all have all inherited is this dude is, you don't hear a lot about him. And I was looking at the Minigrams history of California. This dude ain't in it. And this dude's the main guy. California doesn't pop till Leland Stanford builds the railroad and he pops America. But he does it with this dude who kills his wife's lover. They make movies and then they both end up screwing each other in the end and basically die dead. It's trippy. I always trip when you read these books that like someone's whole gnarly life is just like two dudes gnarly life's just encapsulated here. And at the end of it, you're like, yeah, well, they lived, they died, they did gnarly things along the way. What did they have to show for? Did they make con conscious contact with God before they croaked out? Didn't sound like either of these dudes were really that conscious. It sounds like they just got totally sucked into the 3D world. And at the end of it all, really never got got the true mission of life. But you know, we are, what we're doing right now with this iPhone is because this cat, this cat right here, MyBridge, was the first dude to make a clip, man. He made a clip of a horse running and he made all sorts of clips and, it, and Edison, Thomas Edison, poached his idea and started making movies because celluloid came out right at the end of, of MyBridge's kind of cycle. And boom, we get movies come right out of this thing. And the West explodes and all sorts of stuff's happening. It's a well-written book. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's a page turner. It's got drama. It's got intrigue. It's got murder. It's got clips. It's, it's got everything you need. Plus, it's just stacked full of pictures. And look, man, I, that's my one pet peeve with like a lot of historical novels. Not enough pictures, not enough maps. It's got maps, it's got pictures, it's got pictures. <laughs> it's got pictures, man. Which is super cool because it's all about a dude taking pictures. Like I've read books about guys taking pictures without any pictures in it. Like that doesn't make any sense, dude. How can you have a book like some of those books I read about the explorers and stuff? Not enough maps. How can you make a book about explorers and not have it just stuffed with maps.
I don't get it. Anyway, man, I am highly recommending The Inventor and the Tycoon by Edward Ball. For those historical people about the 1800s, this is this will put out a piece to the jigsaw puzzle of who we are, how we got here, what we're all about. And those of us who live in California, grew up in California, man, this is pretty insightful stuff about the state we live in because I learned a bunch that I didn't know. And I like to learn. So that's it. The Inventor and the Tycoon by Edward Ball. Get it. Read it. Think it. Live it. It's the illusion. Out.